It's 23 minutes to seven now. The term war on terror has now been with us for nearly two decades, dating back to the aftermath of 9-11. It's taken American service personnel to Afghanistan, Iraq and beyond. And how the threat of terror is perceived and responded to has become ever more complex. Our security correspondent Frank Gardner has been exploring what the war on terror has meant and what it has cost. All right, OK, clear! U.S. troops in combat in Afghanistan. The fighting there is less intense than it used to be, but nearly 19 years on from the U.S. declaring a war on terror, thousands of U.S. servicemen and women are still stationed in hotspots all over the world. So I asked the U.S. State Department coordinator for counterterrorism, Ambassador Nathan Sales, if the war on terror is still going. The fight is very much ongoing. We're winning the fight, but we're continuing to fight against a determined enemy, or I should say determined group of enemies. Take ISIS, for instance. We, with our partners, have destroyed the physical caliphate, the so-called caliphate, in Syria and Iraq, and we have eliminated the former leader of ISIS. But ISIS affiliates in other parts of the world are still very active. Our war on terror begins with al-Qaeda. But it does not end there. President George W. Bush, soon after the 9-11 attacks, back in 2001. You're either with us or against us, he said. That stark division sometimes turned potential allies into enemies. The editor of the UAE newspaper, The National, is Mina Al-Arabi, originally from Mosul. In Iraq, there were clear instances where the United States undercut the Iraqi state. Of course, in 2003, the decision to dismantle the police, the decision to dismantle the military, the decision to put tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of young men out of work without giving them any other option and branding them as terrorists, or even at that point, it was this idea that they were former Ba'athists affiliated with the regime and therefore to be completely excluded from the country. And so they became the nucleus for Al-Qaeda in Iraq, that then, of course, became the next nucleus of ISIS. Anti-American protests like this one in Iraq have been a frequent feature in the Middle East. Sometimes they're against what people see as foreign occupation, other times against the West's perceived support for autocratic regimes with poor human rights records. I asked Ambassador Sales if U.S. policy might have encouraged undemocratic rulers to ignore human rights. The consistent message that our partners are hearing from us is you don't have to choose between rule of law and security. That is a false choice. The Western approach, the American approach to counterterrorism that emphasizes human rights and the rule of law allows us to confront the threats we face in a way that's true to our values. The early years of the war on terror did enormous damage to not just America, but the West's reputation with Guantanamo Bay, black sites, enhanced interrogation, amounting to torture, which gave license to a lot of other people to say, if America doesn't respect the rule of law, why should we? I can't relitigate decisions that different officials made in different circumstances almost 20 years ago. I can tell you that the world has learned a lot of lessons about what works and what doesn't, and we've incorporated those lessons into our current approaches. The war on terror is estimated to have cost well in excess of one trillion U.S. dollars. Most of that on military action, intelligence gathering and drone strikes. Only a tiny fraction has gone towards prevention, steering people away from extremism. Shiraz Maher from King's College Institute for the Study of Radicalization believes this war has helped spawn many of today's other problems in society. I think the war on terror is far from over. I think if you look at things like uh, the rise of Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, then that fueled a degree of xenophobia in Europe, that fueled a degree of suspicion, hostility towards Muslims, which translated into animosity towards refugees and the refugee crisis. You can see a cascading series of consequences. So I think it's fair to say that the war on terror uh, is far from over in many senses. So will there ever be a decisive mission accomplished moment bringing the so-called war on terror to a close. That's unlikely, because terrorism can only be reduced to what officials call manageable levels. And today, there is a newly emerging threat, that of far-right extremism, something that will likely breathe new life into what appears to be a war without end.